What's happening everybody? Jeff Anderson here with One Fish, Two Fish. And today, you guys, we're gonna talk about how to catch trophy gator trout. Them big old speckled trout, that's what we're gonna be talking about how to fish, how to target them. And we're gonna talk about everything from the bait that I use, how I target them different times of the year, what I look for, and just give you guys all my secrets. Get the day. Get the day. Oh my gosh. Oh my God. Unreal. Fact. That is the biggest trout. All right, you guys, time to get this beauty back to Mother Nature, but uh, one last pan over this beautiful speckled trout. So that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna talk about how to target these trophy speckled trout. And the first thing that I have to say is when you go to target these trophy trout, you really have to approach it differently than you would if you're just going out to just try and catch inshore fish, redfish, or fill up a stringer, catch some uh, flounder or whatever. It has to be a different approach. So these trophy trout, they are like a almost completely Holy different moly. species altogether than a normal size or a smaller speckled trout. So I compare a trophy gator trout to a chopper bluefish. Um, they are just more of a voracious feeder. Uh, they're not too skittish. They're also more educated on certain things like even fishing pressure. A speckled trout is the apex predator of its environment back here in the flats. So again, people, we're elephant hunting, we're going for that trophy whitetail buck. In the springtime, these trout, the trout have evolved to have a darker back to them. So this right here, this is a mirror lure MR27, kind of looks similar to a speckled trout in where it, so where it has a darker purple back to them. Sunlight and the warmth is really important for speckled trout. They're a cold-blooded species, and they've evolved to have, as they get bigger, a darker back to them. So a lot of our trophy trout, whether it is wintertime or summer, are gonna be caught up shallow in that oh two gosh. to four, oh five foot water oh depths. They're gosh. also, a lot of speckled trout are gonna be in and around grass flats. The trophy trout, are gonna be around those grass flats as well. Uh, but in the springtime, at least in my fishery, these trout in the Virginia, North Carolina area, these trout are on the move. Uh, we do have resident fish that are gonna be near these flats that warm up, just like today that we're filming. It's sunny, it's a little bit warmer. So these trout are gonna be looking for the water that is going to provide, yes, where's the bait, where's the food source, and comfort. Really, really important for these trophy trout. So just one day of warmer weather can make a huge difference because these trout, they'll move large distances to migrate the migratory class of trout that we have. And even Texas and Louisiana, y'all have some trout that move larger distances, but you also have some trout that have a micro migration or they just kind of hang out in one inlet all year round, they're resident fish. So in the springtime, these trout are going to start to get on to move. So these trout are coming out of winter time where we're fishing really slow for them. And in the springtime, what we're gonna be doing is we are gonna be targeting these trout in their transition areas. So that's gonna be, say for instance, a flat like behind me that's right near some deeper water because in the springtime, you'll have a day like this where it's really nice and then you could get a cold snap. It could almost get down to freezing at night. So these trout, these trophy trout are going to be in areas where they can find that protection and that more consistent water temperature. So in the springtime, this is a lure that I'm gonna be using all year round. This is a mirror lure MR27, and this is a slow sinking or suspending uh, bait. So this bait right here is I pretty much exactly what these speckled trout are gonna be feeding on. So we want something that's not gonna be too big because that water temperature is still gonna be a little cold, and also something that moves a little slower. So that's where a one eighth ounce jig head with I've got a diesel minnow Z Right here, I'm also gonna be using a normal size minnow Z, a 1 8 ounce jig head, slower fall rate, 
and I'm also gonna be working it slower. So when that water temp is in the 50s and 60s, these trout, they're gonna start feeding, again, much more heavier than they were and just moving much more than they were in the winter time. So these are two examples of some lures that I'm gonna be using in the springtime. And that's a MR-17. This is a Mardi Gras. And then I've got an MR-27. I've got some different colors. This is a little bit more natural looking color, but I also, I really love the Mardi Gras. That's just my personal preference. Love to hear everybody's comments below, what you guys like. But I do want something that's a little bit more slow and suspending. If you're targeting trophy trout, you do, I highly recommend you can be successful with soft plastics, but hard plastics is something that you definitely want to learn to fish. And this is something you can use all year round. Uh, so these are some of the baits that we're gonna be you know, using. And we are gonna be looking for those flats. And we're definitely be looking for where's that bait gonna be because bait is on the move. All the life is on the move. Uh, we even have some of our fish, they run the beaches. When the water temp in the ocean gets into the mid 50s, a lot of these trophy trout are gonna be running the beaches. They're migrating from uh, Noose River, Moorhead City, up here into the bay and they're getting ready to spawn. Texas, y'all just had a bad fish kill, so you guys definitely feel for y'all down there. Um, but these trout will come up, just like in Texas, these big trophy trout, they'll come up into the flats and they'll soak in the sun. It's not just the warmer water that brings these trout up onto these shallower areas in the cooler months and even into the springtime. So a lot of your trophy trout, they're gonna be actually caught shallower. Definitely gonna be using some scent with these. I'm a firm believer, I know speckled trout, they're not as scent oriented as redfish are, but scent does help. It certainly does help. So in the springtime, that's what we're doing, is water temperature is key. And as always, where's the bait? So water temperature is super, super important. As we move into that water temperature gets up into the 60s, and now we're talking about April and May, then we start to have that transition from spring and we're going into summer, that water temp is warming up into the 60s. We're also gonna have our crabs that are gonna start to come up into the flats, peeler crabs, fiddler crabs, all that are gonna come up into these flats, into these shallower areas. That's gonna bring a whole biomass. Um, when you get into that spawning season, when that water temperature gets into 70 degrees, these trout, they spawn in two, four, about six foot water depths. And that's where they're going to be looking for a consistent food source. One of the things we're also going to be looking for is slicks. So if you guys don't know what slicks are, that's like where you have a school of Menhaden, school of bunker. So Menhaden is a fish that produces so much oils around them. And if the school of bunker is submerged, or even if there's a school of bunker around, it'll look like someone dumped a bunch of oil on top of the water. So you do want to be looking for those slicks. Those are gonna be a key indicator for where those trophy trout are gonna be hanging out. Another thing is also just fishing pressure. These trophy trout, they're more educated. They have, they're like, almost if you think about like a sea turtle the statistics on a small sea turtle and then it makes it to a giant leatherback and all the things that it's seen throughout its lifetime that's just like a trophy trout which is why it's even that much more important to release these fish because they really are special they're special to the uh, environment to the ecosystem and just to the speckled trout fishery as a whole so i really like the release over 20 things like that guys please keep that in mind also these trophy trout they don't really taste as good as those 15 18 inches the other things we're gonna be looking for is birds pelicans um and just really those uh cormorants if i see cormorants coming up coming down coming up coming down then that's something that's really going to be a key indicator in the summertime is really just looking for where's the bait um and if you can find uh, the bait and you can also find where these fish are going to be in their happy place spawning and in and around bait Then you're going to have a great shot at these trophy trout as you can see This is a weedless style hook right here that you know You can throw up into the submerged grass and it's obviously not going to get hung up on the grass another thing that I use and a lot of people look down upon it is a popping cork 
So I've caught some of my biggest trout on a popping cork. So a uh, popping cork is kind of looked down upon, I don't know why, to a lot of the uh, expert trout anglers because it can be a little bit more kind of beginner, but I don't care. When I'm out there targeting trout, I'm gonna use whatever is gonna allow me to catch that fish. So a popping cork, it will work because it does mimic that school of busting bait. So popping cork is great. And I'm also going to be, that's another thing too. I catch a lot of trophy trout on shrimp. And there's a lot of people who disagree that trout will follow schools of shrimp. You guys, trophy trout are such an apex predator. So I've been in a scenario where I was using some hard plastics and I was using some swim baits. They just weren't getting it done. I threw a shrimp underneath of a popping cork first cast. I hooked back to back into trophy trout. It was actually the first time I was trout fishing this past year, 2020 in the fall, and uh, it was back to back. So it was on, it was on shrimp. So uh, that's my opinion with that. Another thing that I do want to talk about is top water. So I use top water when I can. Um, I do use top water as a search bait. Um, but there are going to be times where, and there has been times where I've been fishing in my kayak in top water got it done more than even live bait underneath of a cork or a subsurface bait. Even I had people fishing next to me with the MR27, I had another buddy fishing next to me with soft plastic and I'm using top water and that's what was getting it done. So top water is definitely something that I'm going to be using more so in the fall months, I'm gonna be consistently throwing top water. And that's honestly where I've caught some of my biggest speckled trout and most consistent speckled trout has been top water. So definitely something you do want to have in your tackle box is top water. Um, I use top water, uh, I'll use it when it's sunny out, I'll use it when it's cloudy out. Um, I think that just getting out there on the water, getting some time on the water, that you guys will figure out what works best in your fishery. But I know a lot of people in Texas, they use top water all day long as well. So that's another thing that's kind of like people say, you can only use top water first light, last light, whatever, um, cloudier days. 100%, that's very true, but I also catch a lot of big trout on top water. Uh, some of our best days this past fall was when the sun had came up and a lot of boats left. So after the boats left and we just kept throwing top water and we were getting bit. So in the summertime, I am gonna be using a combination of say top water and then some subsurface baits that is going to be not fished as slow as it will be in the winter time or in the cooler months because these trophy trout, they are gonna be into chasing bait and they are gonna be more aggressive. So in the really like in the warmer months, I will, like I said, I'm always, I always have one of these tied on, always. But how I fish it is differently throughout the year. In the winter time, it's deathly slow. Cast it out and let it sit sometimes for as much as 10 seconds. And then it's slight twitches, barely, barely twitching it. And the bite is also going to be a subtle like tick of your line or a tick at the end of your rod. Um, sometimes you will get that aggressive strike in the winter time, but in the summer when I'm fishing this Mirrodin uh, or I'm fishing something like this, it is going to be a little bit more of like a swimming motion because I want to mimic a bait fish trying to escape an area that it knows it shouldn't be in. These speckled trout, they are again they're so much an apex predator that they're going to be into chasing bait when i'm throwing top water and i get blowed up on and you see that big old swirl and say the trout misses it just like a chopper bluefish i'm going to speed up my cadence a little bit and that could draw that second strike uh, same thing with the mr27 my cadence is going to be cast it out Maybe let it get to depth, because these are slow sinking, suspending, so it's gonna slowly sink. And then it's just gonna be twitch, twitch, pause. Twitch, twitch, pause. Twitch, twitch, pause. And maybe twitch, twitch, twitch. So I do want to kind of vary up my cadence. So in the warmer months, these are the baits that I'm gonna be using. 
I will probably start off my day with this is the uh, Top Dog Junior mirror lure. And then I'll have the MR27. And if I'm fishing a really grassy area, I've got something like this, the EWG hook weedless, or I'm gonna be using something like this. It's like a swim bait, one eighth ounce jig head. I might use a quarter ounce, probably gonna be a one eighth ounce jig head, something like that. So if you're targeting these trophy trout, congratulations, you're a fishing freak and you're gonna nerd out with fishing with me here for a second because the moon phase and the tides is something that you do want to think about. I'm gonna speak out of both sides of my mouth for a second. I'm a firm believer, if you're someone who can only fish certain days out of the week, go fishing. Because I've caught trophy trout in days that the rules of fishing say I shouldn't have caught that trout. The tidal coefficient was lower, uh, it was a lower tide, whatever. You're out fishing, you put your bait in front of that trophy trout, they're the apex predator, nine times out of 10, just like a redfish, they're gonna destroy it. But if you're going out and if you have the ability to plan around it, you do wanna look at these moon cycles, you know, five days before, five days after that full moon. So you're gonna have a higher tidal coefficient, more water moving, more bait moving. Also, the speckled trout tend to spawn around a full moon. I don't know what it is with fish and marine life, but the moon will dictate spawning. So that's something that you want to also be aware of because these fish, they're gonna be eating, eating, pre-spawn, just like a largemouth bass or anything else. Then they're gonna spawn and then the post-spawn, they're gonna be eating around that too. So that's something that you do want to pay attention to if you can help it is the moon cycles and the tidal coefficients. I don't have enough time on this video to go into super in depth about that, but you do want to, if you have a higher tidal coefficient, you do have more of that full moon and you're gonna fish in and around that full moon, that's something that you do want to target. For me, if I could paint the perfect picture of a day to target trophy trout, it'd be a cooler early fall morning with almost like a light drizzle or a rain, cloudy. And then you're fishing in probably uh, three or four days after a full moon. That right there and a northeast wind in my fishery is something that I feel like I'm going to have a really good shot at that trophy trout. So in the fall, when the water temps start to get back into the 60s, these trout, they're gonna be eating and gorging themselves as much as they can. And that's where in the fall, I'm gonna be actually using these larger profile baits. Um, if I do get into a school of trout, of smaller trout, especially in the fall, because that's when, at least in my fishery, we have just insane amounts of speckled trout really everywhere. That's where I will, if, if say I get into a school of fish that's like 14 to 15 inches in the fall, I'm probably gonna be moving. I might stay in that same exact area or that same flat, but I'm gonna be moving to a different area of that flat, if that makes any sense at all. Because there's a reason why that there's fish there, even if they're not the trophy trout. But in my opinion, those, tro those trophy trout are gonna be in and around that area. Water quality, super important. That food source, really important. But these fish in the fall, these trophy trout, they're gonna be in bulking season. And I've caught trophy trout in and around some of those smaller fish, 15, 16, 17 inches, and they get competitive. So I'm gonna be using this double XL right here in the fall. Um, I will be using, again, this is something you can use pretty much all year round. This is the diesel minnow, or just the regular size uh, minnow Z by Z-Man. Another thing that I like to use in the fall and late summer, this is the fried chicken. Is this the trout trick? Yep, this is the swimming trout trick. This right here is probably my favorite soft plastic to use in the late summer into early fall in my fishery because the shrimp start to get onto the move and there's a lot of shrimp. But this bait right here, it kind of looks like a combination between a shrimp and a mullet. So a smaller mullet, like a finger mullet. So that's something that I'm definitely gonna be using 
in the late summer into the fall is this right here. Whoa. Uh, but I will scale my Whoa. bait size up. Um, I will be looking Whoa, for areas where these trout, they're going to be on the move. So whether they're coming down the bay or they're just you know, again, moving to an area that they're going to be positioning themselves for almost getting ready for uh, the winter time. So a lot of these trout, they're going to be running the beaches. They're going to be running parts of the bay and they are going to be running down on the coast, which is one of my favorite ways to catch these trout is when they're transitioning up and down our coast. And that's probably similar in and around Texas and Louisiana. I would love to hear feedback love to hear some comments on that but that's what i'm doing in the fall is i'm looking for those areas i'm looking for where are these trout going to be along their path of migration but they're going to be feeding and gorging themselves as much as possible so you do want to get on that trout bite i've had you know days where i've caught multiple trophy trout in back to back casts is water quality really important with trout speckled trout do not tend to like murkier water that's in my opinion why submerged grass is also something that really uh, attracts these trophy trout because you're going to have higher water quality you're going to have higher water clarity um, and these trout are more sight oriented to feeding less scent oriented like redfish so those grass flats um, are pretty much always going to be a guarantee that you're going to find trout around there but those are the things that you do want to target uh, in my fishery uh, the migration of crabs is really important too some of the old timers in the bay are catching some of the biggest trout they've ever caught on peeler crabs or just live bait so that's something that if you are into, you know, just throwing some bait out underneath of a cork, I mean, that will catch you some of the biggest trout of your life. And don't be afraid to throw on, you know, a live uh, smaller spot or a pig fish is really popular in the Outer Banks. Uh, we're using the Paul Browns and these really getting into the late fall and into winter time. I like these, you know, it's like a combination between a soft plastic and a hard plastic. Um, just a slight uh, twitch of the rod tip will give this some great action. A little bit slower of a sink rate, a little bit of vibration and some noise there. But the Paul Brown is something that we are gonna use in those later fall months. You can use Paul Brown really any month, but I like to use these in that November and into December is the Paul Brown. So when we get into that November and December, then we're gonna be using, I don't know if I, oh, I did bring some, is this is a Heavy Dean. This is the MR18. So this is the Heavy Dean. And uh, this is the smaller profile. It's got a faster sink rate. And uh, that's what we're gonna be looking for is these speckled trout are going to be in those transition areas where either they're going to be spending their winter months. If they're a resident speckled trout, a lot of times they're going to push to the back of the inlets. They're going to push to areas that are going to warm up on a sunnier day with a flat, but it's going to be near adjacent to some of that deeper water. And deeper water for speckled trout is really not that deep. It's like six, seven, eight feet. It could be, we've caught them as deep as 20 feet plus that's in the mid-atlantic but um so that's kind of what we're doing in the winter time and then we're also using really small lightweight jig heads in the winter time so in the winter time that is where i am going to be fishing with a 1 8 ounce jig head in the winter time and it's not i'm not really like casting it out and ripping it back into me it's just a slow like twitch twitch and that's what it's mimicking is a lot of these fish they're just moving slower so the trout will still be schooled up in and around each other getting into november and december and even into the winter months in the winter time i do use a smaller profile bait 
because again, when you're talking about the fish conserving energy, they're a cold blooded species. So when a fish is digesting food or when they're even going after their food, they're using energy. So that's why, again, coming up here on these shallow flats and taking in that sunlight is going to help them with their energy levels. Because as a cold blooded species, uh, if there's no sun, we actually had a small fish kill here uh, in the um, Virginia area, Chesapeake Bay area uh, this spring or, or late winter uh, because my opinion, not necessarily because of the like crazy colder weather. It was also, we had cooler weather uh, and then we had some, we had like record amounts of cloudy days. So it was just like really depressing weather, you know, for about three weeks straight. And we did have some fish that floated up. We didn't have a bad fish kill like Texas, but we did have, you know, some fish that floated up. So that really goes to show how much the sun and these flats play a role in these speckled trout. All right, so for targeting those trophy gator speckled trout um you that's what you want to do is pay more attention to just the elements everything around you all your surroundings what birds are around pelicans cormorants any bird that's going to be feeding on the bait and the forage that those tr trophy trout are going to be feeding on something that you do want to keep in mind fishing pressure super important wade fishing kayaks getting away from the crowds and just like hunting that trophy whitetail buck you know you can't go spooking these trophy trout so you just have to be that much more in tune with your surroundings and making sure that you're not spooking these fish um, so anyways y'all hopefully that helps y'all target these trophy trout we'll have a lot more videos coming out for you guys you guys leave us a comment below if y'all want to see any other videos like this and uh, that's all I gotta say. Get up off your butt, catch yourself a big old speckled trout. Peace out.